Hello everyone. So today we're going to be solving the 2018 AP Physics 1 free response questions. So we're going to start with question 1 and we're going to do parts A and B today. Okay, so let's read question 1. A spacecraft of mass m is in a clockwise circular orbit of radius r around Earth as shown in the figure above. The mass of Earth is me. So part a. In the figure below, draw and label the forces, not components, that act on the spacecraft. Each force must be represented by distinct arrows starting on and pointing away from the spacecraft. Okay. So what forces are acting on the spacecraft? So if the spacecraft is moving in a circular orbit, there must be a force keeping it in a circular orbit, and that is the centripetal force. So we immediately know we'll have an arrow like this. But what force is it? It's not centripetal force. Be careful about that. Because centripetal force is just another name for a force. It's another name for a force that keeps an object moving in uniform circular motion. So this force, well, you can see, is gravity. This force has to be gravity. Because if you look at the diagram, you see that Earth is trying to pull the spacecraft in using its gravitational pull. However, it's the spacecraft is moving too fast so the earth will the earth's gravity will just act as a centripetal force and keep the spacecraft in orbit okay so now we're going to move on to part b so part b so we're going to solve the first part of part b derive an equation for the orbital period t of the spacecraft in terms of m m e r and physical constants as appropriate if you need to draw anything other than what you have shown in part A to assist in your solution, use the space below. Do not add anything to the figure in part A. Okay, so if you want to find part, if you want to find this equation, well, what may pop into your mind is gravity is a centripetal force. All right? That means this force will cause a centripetal acceleration. So they give you an equation, equation sheet. The centripetal acceleration will be V squared over R. Okay? Now, you could either use the formula for centripetal force. Fc equals mV squared over R. But to be on the safe side, I'll just use the second law and sort of, quote unquote, derive centripetal force. So we have the centripetal force over m, Newton's second law, equals v squared over r. And we get centripetal force equals mv squared over r. Okay, so if you want to find a centripetal force, well, we already know it's gravity. So the force of gravity is given by the law of universal gravitation. So that's G M E. So that's mass of Earth times M of the spacecraft over R squared equals M V squared over R. You can notice that you can cancel out M and cancel out M. And they can also cancel out one of the R's. This goes away and this goes away. So we're left with V squared equals G M E over R. G times the mass of Earth over R. Okay. So we could you could solve for V, but they don't ask you to do that. We're trying to solve for the orbital period. However, some uh, people may get tripped up. They would say, wait, how do you get a T? There's no T in here. 
if you think carefully, there is a T. So if we're assuming it moves like with a constant velocity, which it should be because there's a constant centripetal force, which means uniform circular motion, that is just equal to the displacement over time. So delta x or delta t, what's delta x? Well, after one revolution, the total distance traveled will be 2 pi r. 2 pi r. Why? Because in one orbital period, period means the time it takes for one cycle to happen. So in one cycle, the spacecraft will go all the way, all the way around the circle. So the circumference of that circle will be 2 pi r over our orbital period t. So now we can introduce t in here. So that means we could substitute in right here 2 pi r over t. Square that quantity and we get g m e over r. So we get 4 pi squared r squared over t squared equals g m e over r. You could try to isolate the t. So we get by dividing through by 4 pi squared r squared. So we have 1 over t squared equals g m e over 4 pi squared then r squared times r will be r cubed right if you take the inverse of that we get t squared equals you just flip the numerator and denominator we have 4 pi squared r cubed over g m e and if you take the square root you should get your answer. 4 pi squared r cubed over g m e. So this is your answer for part b part 1. <coughs> now if you notice, some people will notice that you can simplify this. You can pull out, so 4 is a perfect square, pi squared of course is a perfect square. So you could pull out t equals 2 pi. You could Simplify the radical by pulling out 2 pi times square root of r cubed over g m e. Then you can simplify either even further by pulling out an r. Because r cubed is basically r squared times r, then the r squared can get pulled out. So what we're left is is our final unsimplified and like simplified answer. This is the maximum that can be simplified, 2 pi r times square root r over g m e. So they'll probably accept any one of these three answers. All right, so part b, part b, part two, a second spacecraft of mass 2m is placed in a circular orbit with the same radius r. Is the orbital period of the second spacecraft greater than, less than, or equal to the orbital period of the first spacecraft? Now, it is actually equal to the orbital period of the spacecraft, okay? So, if you think about gravitational force, you might think more gravitational force. That also means more centripetal force, okay? So, more centripetal force, all right? And since both the centripetal force is based on mass, and the gravitational force is also based on mass, the mass will cancel. Mass will, will not affect the final answer. All right, so we're going to do the later parts. If you have any questions, you can comment below. I'll try to answer as much questions as I can.